On the breakfast, abducted train passengers reach 101 days in captivity today. Families, relatives and friends of captive embark on a peaceful protest, appealing to the government to secure the release of passengers. Also on the breakfast, the Islamic State West African Province ESWAP claims responsibility for the breach of custodial facility in the Koje area of Niger's capital, causing hundreds of detainees to regain freedom, including those under the charges of committing act of terrorism. And don't forget, we'd also be looking through today's papers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Well, good morning and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Boku. I trust you had a fantastic night rest and you're up and about, uh, you know, with the day's business. Well, we start off, as always, with our trending conversation. Uh, we talk about stories that are generating different reactions, causing Nigerians, uh, you know, to add their thoughts in different spaces. All right. Uh, first on the list this morning is the Islamic State of West African Province, you call them ESWAP, claiming responsibility for the attack on Kuje prison in the capital, the nation's capital, that's Abuja. Uh, that was true statement that was actually released. Uh, through, you know, spokesperson of ESWEB. we we'll quickly take this track when we return. We'll continue with the conversation. Stay with us. Very, very uh, unfortunate scene and very saddening scene right there. Uh, if you've seen the claims that's been made. Now, according to the report, you also have the Minister of Defence saying out of uh, 994 inmates, after a roll call, you have... 111 left and so you have hundreds of these persons who are out on the streets now the Kuji uh, custodial center is a center that actually holds a lot of uh, high profile persons especially those who are charged with the act of terrorism really sad and very unfortunate that this happens uh, you know, at the Federal Capital Territory, just shortly after, I mean, same time when you have a threat, uh, the attack on the presidential convoy. The issue of security is still on top of the front burner. It calls for government swift action. But the question continues to remain um, if this person, we're talking about this terrorist now, who constantly have threatened peace and, uh, you know, the lives of the people. Of course, we know that everyone has a right to life, but are these persons, are these terrorists not reachable or their spirit? How do they even operate? Is it that the Nigerian security architecture is overwhelmed by all of this? Now, these are some of the questions that are begging for answers. We'll move away from that, looking at the University of Ibadan imposing a daily electricity bill. Uh, <laughs> It just brings us back to the conversation that we had some, I mean, just last week about, uh, we talked about, if not last week, almost this week, talking about, uh, you know, the hospital where you have babies. It was claimed that babies had died, about 14 of them, because of power outage, uh, the incubator. So the management of the University College Hospital, Ibadan, you know, your state, has made it mandatory for every patient in the hospital to pay a daily sum of 1,000 naira electricity bill. Now, according to the administrator, uh, making this known in a secular, was disclosed that the new development was prompted by the high cost of electricity tariff and diesel. Uh, following the recurring power outage in the hospital and high cost of electricity tariff and inflation and the price of diesel, 
which have impeded stable power supply. Management has decided to consider uh, measures that can help to facilitate lawless, flawless service delivery in uh, the hospital. Uh, so that's that's actually uh, you know comment that's been put up, but also it might interest you uh, to know that the university in 1985, the University of Ibadan Teaching Hospital, had a project that was commissioned by President Muhammadu Buhari uh, in the 80s. And it unveiled, according to, if, if you go to that particular, uh, if you visit the, uh, the hospital, you would see that in 1985, President Muhammadu Buhari had commissioned the Jabbar Hydroelectricity Power Station. And it is only an irony and very contradictory that, you know, the hospital would have to ask uh, patients to actually pay a thousand naira for electricity bill. And the teaching hospitals, how many teaching hospitals do we have across the uh, federation, uh, at, across the entire country? About 22 or thereabout uh, teaching hospital. You ask yourself, uh, the issue of health, is it in the exclusive or the concurrent list? So you have it in the concurrent list because you have uh, the hospitals, state hospitals and, and the primary health care. And then you have the teaching hospitals. But it's really saddening. It's really, really saddening. The question now is, where is the Minister of uh, the Health? We're talking about the Minister of Health. What is the ministry doing at this particular point in time? What's going on? But once upon a time, you also have the Minister tree and the minister answering some questions when he was someone and he said the reason why the teaching hospitals are not functional tertiary institution is because of the lack of attention that's not being paid to uh, the primary health care institutions and what have you and so because of that the fact that the attention is not being uh, paid to or people don't patronize it that's the reason for what it is but you see it's just very simple it's not rocket science to understand that there's a need for us to have a constant power supply as a nation and we can understand how far that can go in terms of uh you know ensuring that the entire economy works and some people say that uh, it would be very important to consider the issue of rationing because you have different sectors that might be in need of power very shameful very very embarrassing disgraceful I really don't know what other adjective you want to use. I really don't know how to explain it, but how do you wake up to the fact one morning that a certain university uh, of Ibadan, we're talking about a federal university right here, teaching hospital, which is within the poor view uh, you know, of the federal government, is imposing daily electricity bill on her patient. Do they even have what it takes? You're talking about a thousand naira on a daily basis. So if you have a case that keeps you about 60 days, how much are you going to pay? Uh, not also forgetting the fact that you have a lot of persons who cannot even cater for their bills. It's really saddening and it's, it's something to bring tears right there. I will move away from that. Another top trending is that you have Funke Akindele as a PDP deputy governor. That's also getting... Uh, Nigerians talking, a uh, running mate, by the way. Uh, so you put that as Lagos PDP class here on Funke Akindele's running mate as running mate for the People's Democratic Party. Prior to this time, there was also concerns about her marriage crashing and whether it was political or not political. And so some people are saying, oh, how do you have someone who sent her husband away from her marital home? What would become of her when she becomes, you know, uh, uh, deputy governor of a state. I mean, what happens? The people would suffer. But it's also important to note that everyone has a right to be voted for. I mean, everyone has a right to, when you talk about the peaceful assembly, it's enshrined in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended. And so, uh, as much as we know that we're clamoring for change and changes, uh, let's also not forget the fact that 
Everyone has a right to freedom of assembly and association. Every individual has a right to assemble freely and associate with other persons he or she may form or belong to any political party, trade union, and association. So, uh, for all of the backlashes coming, we also need to understand, even you as an individual who is also talking about Funke, you also have a right to belong to any association as long as it doesn't pose a threat. Uh, you know, to national security and the peace of the country. Uh, you also have a right to vote and be voted for. That's also enshrined in the Constitution. And so you, one would want to say that uh, Funke Akindele is acting within her rights. That's uh, in the Constitution. But we also, you, you might also want to say, hey, what are the grievances? Then you disapprove of a certain political party. The only way to do all of that is when it comes to the day of the elections where you have your PVC. And your PVC is the only uh, way to determine who becomes and who becomes not. So, I mean, if you, if you have any bias or any, uh, you know, you're displeased by certain political party, not very pleased, uh, Nigerians need to understand that the power lies, you know, with your vote and there's no way you're going to cast your vote if you don't have your PVC. So it's okay to put out all of the criticism and all of the reaction, but you also need to know that she as an individual has not committed any crime. And if you're not in support of a certain candidate of any political party or of a political or any political party, then you just you know just get ready to ensure that you do not cast your vote on that day of election but that's so much we can take this morning on the top trending we take a break when we return it'll be time for us to go through the front pages of a national daily so call it the news off the press stay with us